the news authority. WWL, New Orleans. They don't make radio deals like that anymore. As we've been telling you all morning, today marks a big anniversary for WWL Radio. It's been on the air for a hundred years now. Our next guest has been part of the station for almost half the time, not the total time, but anyway, he started the station, he started the station when he was just 19 years old. We're joined by uh, Scoot Paysat, who uh, most people know in this town as Scoot. I mean, when, when I was listening to you back in the, in the late 70s, early 80s, it was always Scoot in the morning. Well, that's right, because that's where I, um, yeah, that's where I started. Yeah, and, and it, 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 because you were always a disc jockey, and I mean, you know, you, you talked a lot as a as a disc jockey, but you played music. Um, this is a whole different ball game. You'd never done talk radio before you came to WVL. No, I hadn't, and uh, I, there was just I just I had this epiphany at some point in my career, and I realized that talk radio was the future, and that I'm not going to, you know, if I stay in music radio, I'm going to be limited to what I can do. Ironically, Eric, um, when I was doing uh, music radio, uh, the program director would always tell me, you talk too much. <laughs> yeah. And then now I play a lot of music and I've had program directors say, well, you know, you play a little too much music. And we were talking before you came on. I mean, how many stations were you at here in New Orleans? And then you moved all around the country. Um, five, five stations here in New Orleans and um, a total of, I guess, 12 stations around the country. Look, I lived in great cities. I love being back in New Orleans. Yeah. I mean, this is really, uh, this is great. And, and, and let's talk about when you came, when you were 19 years old, you were then working for the great Bob Ruby. Bob Ruby. A lot of people of, of our generation remember him. He yeah. was a biggie. Uh, you know, he's kind of been forgotten over the years. I learned a lot from Bob. In fact, when I went, when, when WWL made the historic decision to change the format of their FM station, WWL FM, they uh, brought me over to do a show. They hid me in the morning because nobody listened to FM in the morning. So yeah. they don't put Scoot in the morning because you know he's really inexperienced, really bad, and nobody was listening. And so I thought, well, you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do a show. And I did a regular show, a uh, personality-driven show, and people started listening. It was amazing. But I took a lot of things that I learned from Bob Ruby and started doing those on on the FM show. It started to develop an audience. So it was fun. And, you know, your career as, 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 a, as a disc jockey, I mean, that was fun. It, it took you all yeah. over the country, as you mentioned. I mean, was that more fun than what you're doing now or just different? It's a little bit different. Uh, it's a lot different, actually. Well, it is, it is a lot different. <laughs> I'm having more fun in my life and my career right now than ever before. You know, when, when I was on B97 and the the new black Corvette, and I'm you know, going to nightclubs and sometimes staying up all night, going right on the air the next morning. Yeah. Didn't happen often, but it did happen a few times. Um, that was fun, but even though this is tougher because of sometimes the content, this is the most fun I've, I've, I've had in my life and in radio. And, and, and really, talk radio brought radio back into importance yeah. again. It did. As you know, there's so many places to get music. You know, when you and I were growing up, the only place to get your favorite song was by listening to the radio. Right. And so you can find your favorite song anywhere. So the key thing that radio still has is personality, this one-on-one -on -one connection with you. And thousands and thousands of people can be listening, but usually you're talking to a person who's listening to you alone. Mm -hmm. They're alone in the car, they're alone at home, they're alone at work. And, and, and there is always controversy, and they say controversy sells. I mean, you've had controversy on your show. You've had opinions that people agreed with uh, immensely and, and thought were, you were terrible for some of them. Oh yeah, some <laughs> of the, the text messages and emails and comments that I get on, on Scoot on the air, social media, uh, I just, uh, uh, it's, it's amazing how mean uh, people can be. But you have to realize that uh, if, you're, if you're getting that reaction, you're doing something right. So I never, I always look at the controversy as, uh, and, and uh, the hate in some ways, as an indication that I'm doing the, the right job. Well, and, and, uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's a time where this country is so divided and we, we just, if you can sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one to somebody, yeah. you can actually get, you know, good conversation and uh, exchange ideas and learn something from someone who disagrees with you. You know, it's never my goal, Eric, to change anybody's mind. You know, my job is to do a show. My job isn't to change the world. This has always been my philosophy. I'm gonna do a show, I'm gonna be honest with you about my opinions, but you're gonna have your opinions as well. And even if you disagree with me, if I have presented it in such a way that 
I made you think that like maybe, oh, well, Scoot's got a good point there. I disagree with him, but he's got a good yeah. point. I want people to at least know that I thought about the whole controversy. And, and, and nobody likes to be categorized as, as you, you know, you want to be pretty much centrist when you're doing a your show. Well, there are things that I'm very liberal on. Yeah. But there's also things that I'm very, very conservative on. But what happens is if you're liberal on one issue, one issue, you're liberal. And they don't care what you think about conservative politics. Many conservatives don't care what you think about conservative politics. It's all about... And vice versa sometimes, what, yeah. Yes. So, um, you know, I'm okay with it. I think most of us are... I'm a radical moderate. I think most of us are that way. And, and it depends on the issue whether we're liberal or conservative. All right. Well, it's 8.50 in the morning. You're back to scoot in the morning. Yeah, I am. I am. On the Listen, morning I want to mention, I was, I was watching in the green room earlier. That's in my apartment. I have a green room where they have a, a, a lot of uh, ferns and, and plants. I was watching in the green room. And um, uh, Eric was, uh, and Sheba were talking about um, Buddy Delberto. Oh, yeah. And I love I'm thinking, Buddy. okay, well, you know, I can't wait till I pass away. And Eric makes fun of the way I <laughs> And I will. All right. Uh, you can listen to Scoot weekdays from 1 to 4 on WWL Radio. April?